the Gospel in Sermon and Song, sponsored by the Lutheran Gospel Hour Association, Pasadena, California, released on a special network of selected stations in the United States, Canada, and overseas, maintained by the prayerful, free-will, tax-deductible gifts of listeners. Satan and his followers thought they had won the battle against the Lord Jesus Christ when he was crucified. Calvary was to be their monumental victory. But Christ was the conqueror. He won the battle. Praise his holy name forevermore. Together with the millions and billions of Christians throughout the whole world, we today say praise God for the victory on Calvary's cross. Christ Jesus has triumphed over Satan and death, and now praise his name. I am free, we've sung for years, and shall through all eternity give thee praises for that great victory over Satan's sin and death. And now we pray that today those that are held in bondage by sin and Satan and the world atmosphere and power may today crumble at the foot of the cross to be lifted up and seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Oh, that tender touch of thine, Lord Jesus, lay thy nail-pierced hands upon people today, transforming lives. We ask it in thy precious name. Amen. <laughs> Thank 
You just heard Joe Erickson sing the first of two songs he sings this month, which you will find in Norman Clayton's songbook, Gospel Lyrics. We will be mailing this month instead of the usual song of the month. The other song will be Christ is Risen, and you'll hear this on the third and fourth broadcast this month. So it's not only a two-in-one offer. Actually, you will be receiving a songbook of 30 songs by such songs writers as John Peterson, Charles March, too. Most of the songs, however, are by Norman Clayton. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. I will publish the name of the Lord, thus says Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 32. Before the advent of radio, all publishing was by word of mouth, man to man, or by the printing press. Now it's published in the heavens and all over the earth on the powerful waves of radio. My, what an advantage is ours in these final days of this age. And you radio friends are our co-laborers and, su and supporters as God's saving message of grace is published far and wide. Your Bible and your checkbook are like the two wings of the birds, making this possible. Save to serve is our motto till Jesus comes in the air. Thank you for your valuable, generous help. The mailing address, remember, is Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 1-2, Pasadena, California. In Canada, Lutheran Gospel Hour, Box 201, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. We repeat, Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 1-2, Pasadena, California. And in Canada, Lutheran Gospel Hour, Box 201, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. In Canada, the required zip code number is 7SK3K4. publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Matthew 9, 10 to 13. 
five different groups are represented in our text. First, we meet Jesus, who represented the Godhead, the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Secondly, we find the publicans, representing the tax collectors and the money changers, to say the least. Thirdly, the sinners are mentioned, and sinners in the sense spoken of here were people who openly lived as transgressors with little or no profession of godliness. The fourth group was called disciples, meaning followers of Christ, chosen by him. Then finally, the fifth group, the Pharisees, the religious leaders who had their religion all on the outside. It is not an uncommon thing to find these five groups gathered now, as in the days of our text. We have them every Sunday in our churches, I believe, and I'm sure I'm speaking to many right now, listening in. We hear quite a bit about the necessity of church unions these days. Everybody ought to try to scrap their differences and consolidate so as to make a grand impression upon the world. Well, here's one merger you'll never have any success with. Jesus, publicans, sinners, disciples, and Pharisees. These can never sit around one table and agree, and I thank God for that. God and the Pharisees never did and never will belong to the same party. God says man can be saved alone by the finished work of Christ, while the Pharisees maintain that man must be saved by their own good works. As a party, they stubbornly refused to budge an inch from their platform. Some, such as Saul of Tarsus, who get their eyes opened, leave the Pharisee party and join that of the publicans and the sinners. Praise God for that. And there's hope, because in Luke 15, we read that the publicans and the sinners drew near for to hear him, because the Pharisees and the scribes murmured and found fault with Christ, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. Well, one thing is certain, the Pharisees were not at the table. They may be seated in honorable seats at many other tables, but not here. There's no room for honor, for self-righteous people in such a gathering. And I've smiled deep down in my heart sometimes when I've seen how uncomfortable the Pharisees are in a meeting where the Holy Spirit spreads the table with the bountiful and merciful provisions and promises of God. While uh, publicans and sinners come, like prodigal sons, home to the banquet table of the Heavenly Father, the Pharisees, like the elder son, feel so out of place that they'd, they'd like to sink through the floor. Anything but stay in such an atmosphere. Why, that's simply ridiculous. Why should nice, refined, church-going people be made to feel that they too need to be saved, like publicans and sinners? Surely God must make a difference. Why, some pastors make the point quite clear that the only ones that need to be converted are the outright ungodly ones who seldom or never go to church, who give little or nothing to the support of the church, people who really are down and out, as we say, but those who are loyal to their church, who pay their dues regularly, who live honestly, doing the best they can, they don't need conversion. Ah, uh, yes, so they say. But the question isn't what do they say, but what does God say? Listen to his own words in Matthew 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye may clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean too. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but within are full of dead man's bones, and of all uncleanness. Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Dare anyone say that God saves a Pharisee in a different way than a publican and a sinner after uh, hearing such words from Christ himself? Uh, do not make God a liar, my unsaved friend. He who said he came to save sinners meant what he said. Not once did he say he had come to reward Pharisees. Let God alone be true and every man a liar who denies that there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If a Pharisee is to be saved, he'll be saved as a sinner and in no other way. 
And if a self-righteous church member is to be saved, he too will have to see himself as a lost, condemned, hell-deserving sinner. I remember I was told about a lady who said she had never done anything she'd be ashamed of. Poor soul. She with a host of other nice people are on their way to hell, full speed ahead, with no interference whatsoever. They don't know that they're lost. Nothing wrong with them. But Jesus said, they that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Listen, friend, this is a message you need. It's God's way of salvation. Christ died for the ungodly. Did he die for you? Seems I can hear people reply, why, that's what I've always heard. We're all sinners, I'm sure, and Christ died for us all. There's nothing else to believe, but I've always believed that. Now, what's wrong with an answer like this? Not much. It sounds quite nice. It reminds us, however, of the rich young ruler when he said, All these things have I observed from my youth. What lack I yet? Ah, oh, that's the point. What lack I yet? The shell is well nigh perfect, but it's only a shell. There's a head full of Bible knowledge, but a heart empty and void of the one thing needful, life, life in his name. Maybe it was not always so. Once Christ our life dwelt in there, but gradually religion took his place. Forms, ceremonies, religious duties, and good deeds took so much room there was no room for him, and so he had to go. Years ago I heard a statement that went to my heart like a dagger. It set me to thinking and to praying as never before that I who preach for others should myself be a castaway. What I heard said was something like this. He was one son fire for God. He was one son fire for God. But now, what was he now? Once a soul winner, now a breadwinner. Oh, may God have mercy on you who once knew the power of the gospel in your heart, but you sold out for the things of this life. Maybe it's not too late. Perhaps you can yet be revived, yet be brought back to a true repentance and faith in the Savior you once loved and served. But whoever you are, and whatever your condition or position, one thing is certain, no previous experience with God will make you more worthy of salvation. You'll have to come in a spiritual sense like the prodigal son came physically as a poor lost sinner dead in trespasses and sins, but praying for life and for sonship. We have heard the joyful sound, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Tell the news far and wide, Jesus saves. Bear the news to every land, climb the steeps and cross the waves. This our song of victory, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. God bless you all in Radio Land to know the meaning of this. Amen. <laughs> I grieve, my Lord, from day to day. I scorned his love so full and free. And though I wandered far away, my mother's prayers have followed me. I'm coming home. I'm coming home to live my wasted life anew. For mother's prayers have followed me, have followed me the whole world through. Or desert wild, or mountain high, a wanderer. Soul condemned to die, still mother's prayers have followed me. I'm coming home, I'm coming home to live my wasted life anew for mother's prayers. Followed me.